strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. All right, so God is talking through Isaiah, speaking hard against them that have pride in their hair. In essence, when you look at that and you look at crown of glory and then you use crown of pride going against each other. So crown of glory dealt with the hair and the crown of pride dealt with people that did things to the hair that they shouldn't do. Amen. Y'all see that? All right. And then it talks about a diadem of beauty. Now the word diadem comes from, you know, judging your judgment. And if you ever, anybody ever watched maybe TV or ever seen the, uh, the judges um, in England and different things like that, they would put something on their head. Uh, Y'all ever seen that? They put, they put on a gray wig because it dealt with wisdom and judgment. And so that, that, and that's where they get it from, that, that, that hoary head, you know, it deals with judgment, amen, and also um, the, uh, uh, the diadem, it deals with beauty of judgment. All right, read on, huh? In that day shall the Lord of hosts be a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto a residue of his people and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also now, have erred. Now, I believe that if, if we understood how much power uh, hair meant and how much you know, if God decides to allow your hair to change, if nature changes your hair color, and you understood how powerful that was, I don't think anybody would be trying to do anything to their hair but make sure that it's, it's kept right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because you'll see in those scriptures it talks about how powerful that, that having that gray hair is and how changing your color, only time your hair changes color is if nature or God allow it to change. Amen. So we shouldn't be the ones to change. I remember one time them. Um, all the men had like a little gold patch in the front of their head, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little gold patch. And I think one side meant that you was something, and the other side meant you was, you know, a little soft or something. So I don't know which side was which. <laughs> Amen. But when you saw that, and you'll see that the, uh, a lot of men was actually dying. At, even now, when you see men that let their hair grow long and get, you know, dreadlocks and all these different things like that, They'll dye the tips of their hair. Yeah. And when you see men, and I, I ain't go as far on men with long hair, but go, let's go to 1 Corinthians, like Corinthians. Some men think it's cool to have long hair. I ain't saying nothing. Amen. All right. So just as it's a shame for a woman to cut her hair because of her glory, a man should not have long hair. All right. And go down to, and you will see, man, people are just falling away. You, the Bible clearly tells us, go to 1 Corinthians 11 and, and, and 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. The Bible said, if you praying or prophesying with your head covered, now all these churches now, these men going to church with these, <laughs> with these hat, little hats on and it's covering their head. Now, look at what he said. He said, it is dishonor of his what? His, his what? head. It dishonor his head. Now, let's go up. Go to the third verse. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Ah, so now, who are we dishonoring? Dishonoring God. So a man dishonor God when he have his head covered and he's praying and prophesying. He doesn't pray and prophesy like he a praying woman. Got his whole head covered. <laughs> yes. They, they should, I don't think a man should wear a hat in church because what if he start, you know, we got to go into prayer. You got to take your hat off. So it's, you know, it, I don't think it's wise for men at all to wear their head covered in, 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 in service. Uh, because the Bible talks about him dishonoring his head. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, see, if it's cold outside and we have a service, you know, I have a hat on too until I'm about to minister and I take my hat off. And I, you will not see me. I don't care how cold it get. I know my mom was 
She was looking at me like I was a nut. I was taking my jacket off, everything, because it was getting hot. And I know I felt her spirit. I, I felt her saying, boy, he didn't put something on his head about the rain and all that. But I can't do it because I'm, I'm ministering. And, you know, of course, she's looking at it from a mother's perspective, but I'm looking at it from a minister's perspective. So, you know, as a man of God, you know, ministering, uh, praying, prophesying, anything doing with ministry, head should not be covered at all. Yes. Well, when we're going out on the street service, everybody ain't saved, so we can't really, you know, whatever. But I, I, I would prefer if, I mean, even though it's cold outside, we're still, you know, coming together. If, if, if you know, ministers or brothers from the church, I think their hair should be uncovered as well or take the hats off. Why? Because they're supposed to be praying for me while I'm preaching anyway. And you ain't better pray with your head covered, and you know, every few seconds, you got to Lord protect Pastor. <laughs> Lord, I need you to touch him. Right? So you wouldn't be able to be in the, the man wouldn't be able to be in the spirit because he's not, you know, have the ability to pray. You know, and this is why, you know, I know a lot of young men and, and we, we had a conversation because a lot of the brothers, you know, got the wave caps. You wake up in the middle of the night, man, you got to keep taking it off. And then you got to wake back up go on and then put it back on and take it off. So, you know, I said, man, I'd rather not even wear it. I'd rather just, you know, if I wake up in the middle of the night and go in prayer, I just wake up. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with wearing it, but I'm just saying, because a lot of times, I ain't saying, I don't, don't get me wrong, I ain't saying there's, not, there's nothing wrong with wearing it, but if you're a prayer, and you know, Bible talks about men ought always to pray, and if you wake up in the middle of the night, you want to get into some prayer, you got to do all this taking off stuff and, you know, derobing and <laughs> just, just to get, you know, just to get back in that place. Now, women is fine. To have you know head covers, wear hats, all that stuff. That's fine, but for for man, man, well, I wouldn't suggest wearing a bonnet to church. But <laughs> men, we want to make sure that we don't have anything on our head. Amen. All right, read on, huh? But but, uh -huh. but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her but, head. Uh, you you read three already. Here. Yeah, go back to three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Uh -huh. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Uh -huh. For that is even all one, as if she were shaven. Mm -hmm. For if the woman be not covered, let her be also be shorn. All right, go to the 14th verse. Though not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, if it, it is a shame unto him. So then, then he goes further to say that nature to teach you. And then nature deals with what's natural. And what's natural means, you know, when you see a lot of these men with long hair, they, they, their walk change based upon the way their hair swing. So they, because a lot of men, yeah, I'm just, I'm just let me just tell you how it is now. A lot of men, they, they want, you know, when their hair just starting to grow a little bit and move a little bit, they want to try to walk to make it to make it move. And to be honest, that a, a, a homosexual spirit can come on a man based upon that hair. All right, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because think about all the all every all the homosexuals, they want to have long hair now. But they've been they because they think they're a woman. But then you have a, a, a man that, you know, wanna let his hair grow out. And, you know, they, they do all of this and all of that, you know, and so this feminine nature comes upon them. So that's why the Bible said, don't nature, nature should be able to teach you that you should not have long hair as a woman. Amen. Amen. All right. Now go down to the book of First Peter, where it's talking about a crown of glory. Um. Well, that hoary head, it was a crown of righteousness, crown of glory. Let's go down there to First Peter chapter 5. All right, 5 and 4, what does that say? And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. All right, the crown of glory. And that, that talks about, you know, the men that uh, are pastors and they'll get a, a crown of glory and you check out all the pastors you see them start getting some type of um, 
Throw salt and pepper up there, man. <laughs> it's not getting, it's starting to grow it, you know, but that, that deals with a, a, um, a crown of glory. And, and you know, uh, I think, you know, it's, it's funny, uh, Pastor Elfshaw, love him. Uh, he, when he, uh, when we first came into the body, he had two uh, streaks on each, both sides. He had one streak on this side, one streak of just straight gray hair. It looked like it was meant to do it like that. It was amazing. I was like, wow, I never seen that like that. So, either, either you know, as a pastor, either you're gonna get some gray, or it's gonna be gone. <laughs> you gonna get one of the two, and it'd be, it'd be there. You know, either it's gonna be there, be in a gray color, or it's gonna, it might leave you. Amen. All right, go down there to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Amen. Revelation 1 and verse number 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, you see that the Bible says that now Jesus came. Amen. When he was on the earth, he did about, he lived to be about 33 years old. And as a 33 year old man to come back in a vision with John and him to see him, not with black hair, brown hair, but he came with what kind of hair? White, White hair. hair. Because it was a sign of, of judgment and a crown of glory on his head. Read up. Huh? His head and his hair were white like wool, mm -hmm. as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And so, so that crown that Jesus had on his head also displays authority. Amen. That, that's where that, uh, what I was talking about, them judges in England, when they wear them little wigs and stuff, it displays, you know, uh, a, a crown of judgment and authority when they put those white things on those wigs on their head. I never really understood it until I started digging deep into study. But I said, man, why do these men keep putting these white wigs on? And they still do it to, today, to this day. Every judge, and I... I'm trying to remember if I saw, ever saw it in America. But I know over there, and I think in some places in America, they, they may do it. But over there in England, every time there is a matter or a case, those judges, they put their robes on, they put them wigs on their heads. I mean, it looks, it looks a little strange, but, you know, it deals with authority. Yes. Question. Yes, sir. Um, I was going to say, I've seen people in the States do it. Um, like when they graduate law school, like even women, they'll put, oh, them put like the white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew 5 and 33. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. All right, so he said, don't swear by heaven. Why? For it is God's throne. All right, the throne of God. All right. Nor by the earth. All right, don't swear by the earth. For it is his footstool. All right. Neither by Jerusalem, uh -huh. for it is the city of the great king. All right. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Ah. So he said, don't swear by your head, because you don't have, all of these are descriptions of stuff you don't have control over. So he said, don't swear by heaven, don't swear by earth. Don't swear by Jerusalem. Do not swear by the head because you ain't got no business changing the color on it because that don't belong to you. That's a powerful scripture. Yes. What does it mean to swear by something? Just like people say, I swear, and you know, this, this almost has to say, you know, I want you to believe what I'm saying. But nobody could ever swear on anything unless they owned it. So you know how people say, oh, I swear on my mama's life. You, you can't swear on your mama's life. You can't because you don't own your mama's life. But they were, people would swear because if you say, I swear on this land. Or I swear because of this land. I swear by this land. 
And if you was lying, they could go ahead and get that land. So more, you, you follow what I'm saying? So that's where swearing, you know, swearing come from. But the Bible give this this description to say you can't swear by these certain things because you don't have any power over any of them. Amen. Read, read that again, huh? Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Mm -hmm. But let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay. For whatsoever is more yeah. than they, these. Go, obviously, go back to where you started, 33. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. That's plain. Say so you can't make, you can't change no color on your hair because you don't. You should have that control over your hair. Shouldn't be, you know, putting them strips, streaks, and you know, uh, back in back a uh, long time ago, they used to do what do they call streaks? Your hair be two different colors, like in between or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So yeah. So you ain't close, huh? <laughs> Uh, they still yeah. do that. People still do that. Okay, I remember back in the day, boy, that was a thing, man. Everybody was. They had, you know, when you go through your hair, just different, you know, colors of mixture. All right, I want you to go to Leviticus chapter ten. And this is a contro, uh, controversial topic and subject. All right, now we're going to talk about arch and eyebrows. Y'all all right? It's getting a little quiet. Got to teach it. All right, go to Leviticus 10 and 10. <laughs> and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy. All right, so first thing we got to make sure that we're making a difference, putting a difference in between holy and unholy. Now, everything that the world does does not mean that the church is supposed to do it. And what we see is that a lot of times the church is mimicking or having the behaviors, everything that the world do, everything that they see the world do, because the world displays this. And we say, man, I want to do, I want to look like that, or you know, I want to be able to, you know, type my stuff up too. All right. Now the Bible talks about the the forehead. Now there's no difference. Uh, the Bible talks. Let, 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 let's go back to First Corinthians first. Y'all going to be all right? Y'all going to take preach pastor this today? <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, Bible says this. All right. Go back to 11 and 5. Mm -hmm. But every woman... That prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. All right. Now, this, I mean, y'all know what the head is. Everybody know what your head is. All right. All right. So, when you're talking about cutting hair off your head, that includes the forehead. This is a part of your head. I tell you, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to give you a scripture about it. Back it up now. Go down to Jeremiah chapter 3. <clears throat> Now, why should not? Why shouldn't we tamper with our eyebrows? Because I, what does the eyebrows do? What What do they do for a person? Huh? Huh? It protects. What else does it do? What could you tell what a person what? Huh? Expressions. You can see expressions when a person's eyebrows look a certain type of way. You can tell. You know, when, this and, uh, when you're happy, when you're sad, all that. You can. <laughs> Y'all follow what I'm saying? So the eyebrows is used for a particular thing. All right? Three and one. Uh -huh. What does that say? They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's wife, another man's, shall he in return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been leaning with. 
lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there has been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead. A what? A whore's forehead. A whore's what? Forehead. forehead. Jesus. Now a whore's forehead dealt with the cutting and curving and shaping and Jesus. all of those things what a woman does to her eyebrows. Oh, Lord. Hello? I just wanted to know what scripture was that again. Oh, Jeremiah 3. We're going to read it again. I'm going to make sure y'all got it. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 3. All right. Jeremiah 3. All right. What verse you all? 3. All right. 3 and 3. Read that again. Therefore. Now, first of all, he, I want you to go back to uh, 3. 3 and 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's. Shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast plagued the harlot with many lovers. Now, anybody know what a harlot is, huh? Yeah, harlot is considered a whore. Now, you know what a whore is, right? And when, when the Bible said that her land was polluted, y'all know what that means, right? Her, 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 her land being her body, having more than one, you know, person. So a whore, so, so when he dealt with this, he was talking about Israel playing the harlot, meaning that they was whoring around with a bunch of different gods. And one of the gods that they dealt with had them to change their eyebrows. Other gods dealt with makeup, and I, and I, I don't think that's on my topic today, but if it is, I'll go there as well. But that other gods dealt with makeup. You know, people used to paint their faces to not only, you know, whores and that, you know, to, to draw men and, and stuff like that, but also they used to do paint their faces as rituals and to, you know, cry out to, to, to mountains and all types of different gods and, paint, you know, paint their face and paint everything. They'll paint their nails, face, leg, all that stuff. And so this is where a lot of that painting polish and stuff comes from that. Yes. Send it to the style. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much does it cost to get it? Oh, anybody know? That's it. That must be professional. Yeah. So, so it 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 does becomes. Yeah, and it actually becomes a tool to to make money and make merchandise out of it. You know, so yes. Yeah, I think it's just as just as wrong. I don't suggest no man to put cuts in his eyebrow. It looks strange. First of all, it looks strange. <laughs> I don't think I don't think no man need to cut the eyebrows up. That's just about as bad as a woman arching hers. 
Yours, your eyebrows are the same. Your, 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 man and woman got both got eyebrows. So the man got eyebrows and the woman got eyebrows. Both of them serve the same purpose to protect. So no, you, a man shouldn't have no. Try, they had a song that said three cuts in your eyebrows trying to wild out or something like that. That's what they, that's where they get it from. Yes. A unibrow. He's gonna have to uni it out. I mean, that's just, that's just see what happens. See, uh, 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 what happens is pe everybody want to look like a standard. So if 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 the world say that you're not supposed to have a unibrow, like Helga Pataki or something like that, and then so you want to go ahead and you know shave it and and you know put the and man, I've seen some people arch their eyebrow and it look like this. Like they doing math, like <laughs> doing division. <laughs> I see a lady had put a mark on her eyebrows, about to touch her ear. So, so, so the Bible talks about. All right, so this is where that you know that that comes from. And and, and prior to the 1500s, they used to do that to gods, you know, arching their eyebrows and stuff like that. That that was, you know, that that was a form of opening itself up to God, you know, like cutting and all that, because they, they didn't use the tools. They didn't have the tools that y'all got now. Little, so they was actually cutting themselves. Actually cutting. This is why the Bible talks about don't put no markings or cuttings in your flesh. And that, that, come, that talks about tattoos and stuff like that and, and cuttings in your flesh, because when you start, and back then, it wasn't like how y'all do a little plucking and stuff. They weren't plucking. They were cutting them. Amen. I remember one of my relatives cut their eyebrows off. I said, man, what you do that for? I said, now I can't tell what's wrong with you. <laughs> I said, man, I don't know if you bad or happy. All right, go back. I'm going to read. They go, say. They say. If a man put away his wife and she go from him and, re and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted. Uh -huh. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast, hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. All right, the Bible said whoredoms and wickedness. So not only was a whore's way, but wicked. It was wicked what they were doing. I don't read. Therefore, the showers have been withholding, and there has been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refuses to be ashamed. The Bible said that they had a whore's forehead. So when you look at a forehead, ain't nothing on your forehead but one thing. How about There's nothing else on your forehead. You, can't, you ain't better find nothing else up there uh, with the exception of your eyebrows. So the only thing you got there... You know, it is the eyebrow show. When it talks about a for horse forehead, there's an eyebrow. When God give you something specific, every part of your body, if God gave it to you, is there for a specified reason. There's nothing on your body that's not there. Just, I mean, that's just there just to be there. Go down to Isaiah chapter 6. All right, question, what if someone goes to the fair to get their face painted? Well, personally, I wouldn't do it. I don't like, I, first of all, I don't want nobody putting nothing on my face, period. And, you know, uh, for those reasons, you know, people put on the face, you know, it says for amusement and, you know, amusing and stuff like that. But... I, I, I wouldn't suggest it now. If you want to go get your face painted and all that stuff like that, that's on you. But I would suggest face paint because it's, it's so, it's just too close to me. They're way too close. And the Bible talk about not getting your face painted, period. They talk, the Bible talk about face painting. And of course, it's talking about makeup and all that stuff coming from, uh, 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 you know, and, and with the spirit of Jezebel and stuff like that. I, I just wouldn't suggest it. I wouldn't suggest it. I wouldn't do it. Yes. Tanning? Oh, now spray tan, I, I maybe, yeah, maybe spray paint, but people laying them things to get tanned, that ain't really painted. But if they spray and stuff, 
like paint on their bodies and yes because they you know they have something now where uh, they've been had a fight for a while that's called body painting so they'll paint something on a person's body they won't have nothing on but it look like they have a shirt on or on some pants and stuff like that so yeah all of that derived from that from that culture now you know somebody you know spraying tan on to get in the tanning bed now that's different yes Television, would do you think it would be wrong for like the person that's like acting or whatever because they have to have certain makeup on for the lighting because it don't is sometimes it'd be uneven so is it would you think like for that person to have a certain type of makeup on they kind of like light up your face or make it darker for the lighting so how would like you do that if you were in that field like I don't, I don't think everybody has to have make and have that's a requirement. I don't think that's a requirement when it comes down that you, you I don't think you have to. I think you could refuse it. They can't make you wear makeup if you say you don't wear makeup. But it's all in there, it's everywhere. You know, you in the, those studios and you, you filming and stuff like that, man, people be they have that, you know, men they, they put makeup on the men. So that's so weird to me, man. I just couldn't sit and let them fight. I feel, I feel less of a man. <laughs> I would be able to do it. Yes. It's crazy because me and Tavon went to model acting school. And, uh, you know, doing the modeling, they actually had all the men wearing makeup. And it's just like, you know, now I'm looking at it now. It's like, I mean, when I was doing it, I mean, I just, you know, doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I, I, I thought nothing of it. But, it, I mean, now, I mean, I used to be hot, the makeup coming off and stuff. Yeah. So. Scratch your face. You got makeup in your fingernails and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Somebody, you had a question? I wanted to say they do have um, um, spray tan in some of the places. Have to lay in a tanning bed. And oh, let me use this. And it, uh, um, it'll make you um, different shades of, um, it's, it's foundation. So basically it is um, makeup. Hey, wow. So th does it change your body? It does, does it for that particular time? or? Yeah, it, it, it gives you the color you want. It gives you the tan that you want with, uh, without laying in a tanning bed. It sprays it. Whoa. Yeah. They spray painting their bodies, man. What in the world? That's tough there, Coop. What you think? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. All right. Isaiah 6, 6 and 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood, above it, stood the seraphims each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly all right so god allowed his angels to have six wings but each wings the, the wings did something so whatever god uh gave or gave these angels he gave them wings for that specific pur purpose so just like the hair on your head he gave us for a specific purpose so we shouldn't tamper with Something that God gave us for a specific purpose. Amen. Y'all follow what I'm saying? You know, because, uh, uh, yes. Like the, um, like the hair on your leg is for like a purpose. The, um, mm -hmm. the hair on your nose that sticks out, that's for like a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, the hair on your arms, under your arms, on your arms. Right. No, it's, yeah, it's all those, purpose, yeah, you know, all those, so are, yeah, all of those are serve a purpose. Now, 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 when you're dealing with holiness, there are specifics. Now, the Bible ain't going further to say, don't shave your legs or don't pluck your nose. Now, they, they serve a purpose. They do. They do. All, everything on your body serves a purpose. But now, when you deal with holiness, it goes different. So the, God didn't say, as a woman, if you got, look like you got somebody in a headlock, that don't, you know, don't shave your arms. You can, you can cut the hair under your arms. Although, you know, everything serves a purpose. But when God specifically point out certain things, those are the things that you, you, you tend to when it comes down to holiness. You know what I'm saying? Now, if a, if a woman, just prime example, if a woman start growing, you know, some women have, you know, uh, are hairy. And, you know, they may have, uh, you know, grow hair and it may come down to here. But, but you know, they, they can cut this because it deals with the nature. You know, a woman should have facial hair like a man. So if she grows that, she can take that off her face because it, it, it doesn't make her look more like a man when she's not. 
You follow what I'm saying? Because the purpose for hair on the face is to make a distinction between a woman and a man. But sometimes the hormones and certain, you know, genetics I have, you know, a woman may have a, you know, a little fuzz or something like that, but she can cut that off because it deals with the nature. So does your, does your arms and all that stuff have a purpose? Absolutely. Hair, all that stuff, you know, legs, arm, it has a purpose, but when it comes down to holiness, if it's not specified, uh, you know, what is the cutting of the hair on the arm? What would that do? Or what is the cutting on the hair on the legs? What does that do? If there's no indication of, you know, it being, you know, not holy, then it's, it's different. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. All right, read, huh? And one cried unto another right. and said, mm -hmm. holy. Oh, go, go to Exodus uh, 28 and 2. So the purpose of what I was saying is, you know, when we look at the, the hair that God's given us on, on the head, especially for uh, a woman and a man, but it's dangerous to tamper with that specific if God put hair on your head as a woman, it's dangerous to come in his presence and you don't tamper with that hair that he done put on you as a glory. It's dangerous to tamper with your, your eyebrows and stuff like that and God gave that to you for a specific reason. And the Bible said that when you tamper with it, 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 it calls you, you know, have a whore's forehead. Y'all follow me? All right? Uh, Exodus 28 and 2. And thou shalt make holy garments mm -hmm. for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Uh-huh. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted. All right, for glory and for beauty. Go to the 40th verse. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them for glory and for beauty. All right, so the purpose for holiness had two parts. For glory and beauty. Now, sometimes what we do is we skip over the glory part and jump to see what, what looks beautiful to us. And we determine beauty based upon the world's standards. We don't determine beauty based upon a holiness standard, but whatever we talk, you know, because the TV will tell you what looks good and what don't. You know, remember when the cover girl used to do, you know, the commercial, I forgot how the song go. I didn't listen to it. I ain't watched TV so long. Something, something, cover, girl, something, whatever it was. But every time you would see that, then it would draw eye at because they'll have celebrities doing cover girl makeup and all that stuff. I have celebrities doing these certain things. So in your mind, man, I want to look like her. She's fa The only way I could be beautiful is if I look like her. If I don't look like her, then I'm not considered beautiful, right? And, and so, so that, that's what happens. So what we do is we look at beauty based upon what the world say, based upon the standards of the world. Now, there's a standard that's out there in the world that has nothing to do with beautiful, because I can be honest with you. Half the people that, look, that wear that makeup, they look like clowns. Yes, they do. They have, man, all this, all this right here be a certain color. And then they lift up their head and they neck a whole different color. <laughs> and then sometimes it, it just looks sometimes it looks scary like it's a like a like a ghost effect or something. It's like like a like a powder, you know, it's and so when we when, when people say that that's beautiful, the thing is, you know, when you start doing that, it's like you almost hate yourself. You hate what you see in the mirror. You know, I've seen people. They make people look like total different people. You have one person on this side, and after they get makeup on that side, I'm like, man, that, there's no way that that's that person. Because they do the little contouring, and nose, nose was wide, now it's narrow, cheekbones, you know, it just, you know, it becomes a disgrace, you know, to not only uh, God, but to humanity, to your people. And like my daughter coming, that's like my daughter's coming to me in, in, in the house, or the house, I mean, with, Face full of makeup. Like, you didn't like what I look like? You look like me. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? It's like a disgrace to your own people. Yes. Okay. Um, I remember when I was in uh, high school and I was like watching these girls like one day they would like have no makeup on, and then the next day 
I'm like, are y'all the same people? Like, is that the same person? Like, totally like and I just, and then when you was talking about makeup, I was like, oh my gosh, like, it's so, it's so real, like, because I, one minute you can look like yourself, but then the next minute you can look like a whole different weird clown person. And yep. Question? Uh. It's not a question, but even with that makeup, there was, um, I forget what country it was in, but it was a guy that sued his wife because when he <laughs> when he found out that she don't look like what a, because she used to wear makeup the whole time, and then when they got married, he found out that she wasn't, you know, yeah. you know, a good sight to see. I mean, so <laughs> he kind of sued her for it. I mean, it's not. No, I mean, it's not. It's, it's really not. I mean, to be honest, it's not fair. It's not fair. All right, Exodus twenty-six. All right, got a question? Yes, sir. Um, so, are you saying that makeup um, is a form of worship, or is it a form of worship? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a form of worship, and it's also, you know, the Bible talks about uh, Jezebel, how she'll be known in the earth now on the face of the earth. So the face of the earth deals with Jezebel. And when you do all the history of uh, makeup and all those different things like that, and then I, I'm going to go thoroughly through it when we get there, but... When you look at makeup and how it derive, a lot of that spirit, the spirit of Jezebel is on people that carry that, you know, to have the makeup. So you know how um, people who wear makeup, oftentimes they're getting it because they're doing it because they're comparing themselves to people on social media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the devil can work in social media and Absolutely. people, you know, they have low self-confidence and, you know, the enemy can get into our minds and, you know, start making us feel like we're not pretty and insecure and, you know, things like that. So could that be a strategy of the enemy to... Like Absolutely, that's how he's working. Worship. Yeah, that's that's how he that's how he operated this hour. You get into those, so that's why the computer and the, you know, the the TV and all those different things. Every everybody, there's nobody that's on TV that doesn't do something contrary to the Bible. That's why all your TV shows now, if there's not a homosexual, it, every every show has a homosexual because it's against God. Every woman on TV going to wear makeup because it's against God. Every woman on TV going to have some type of mushroom cut, fade, something because it's against God. So when you look at TV and you see everybody on there, it, there's going to be something that's on there that's against God. I was, I was Last night I was sitting at a table eating, and there was a, a TV show on. Uh, my kids was watching, and I forgot what they said, something about I'm a dancer or I'm a dance for money. And I, 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 I said, teacher, what they just say? They said, they didn't dance for money. And, my, and I, I was like, that's a little girl. I don't think she said it was a boy or something like that. So in my mind, I'm like, man, these, I'm like, man, these jokes turn this TV off. Because the, what, what, what they were saying and, and everything that's said on TV, the things that are done, is just, you know, uh, it's, it's all of it's contrary to God because Satan used the system or the beast, the computer, to have his way with people. And that's how so many people get turned away from God. So many people do things. And then people get upset when you're teaching a message like this from the Bible. They get mad at you and because they got their confidence off of the TV. The TV told them that they could wear this. The TV told them that they could look like this. And because the TV said it, they just did it. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. I'll go, go back to Exodus 26. All right, and six, huh? And thou shalt make 50 tashes of gold and couple the curtains together with the tashes, and it shall be one tabernacle. And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle. Eleven curtains shalt thou make. The length of one curtain shall be 30 cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and the uh, eleven curtains shall be all of one measure. And thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves and shalt double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make 50 loops on the edge of the one curtain that it outmost is outmost in the coupling and 50 loops in the edge of the curtain which coupleth the second. And thou shalt make 50 tachets of brass and put the tachets in, into the loops 
and couple the tent together that it may be one. And the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remaineth shall hang over the back side of the tabernacle, and a cubic on the one side and a cubic on the other side of that which remaineth in the length of the curtain of the tent. Now, isn't it amazing that the tabernacle, when it was made, it had hair to cover it and separate it from the world? Hair. We're talking about goat's hair. And the, and the women was responsible for putting this hair together and, and, and so that the, the tabernacle could be covered. So the tabernacle being covered to, uh, and the curtain that was drafted in to, to where it was a separation from the world and getting inside of the tabernacle. So hair, even in the Old Testament, was used to cover and to separate. Powerful. All right. Go to Exodus 35 and 25. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. All right, so that was the women's job to spin and, and get this ghost hair and to create it into a curtain. And then when the curtain was placed on the tabernacle, it separated the tabernacle or the entrance of the tabernacle to the world. Amen. And our bodies are as a tabernacle or as a temple. And so if God allowed during that time here to cover and separate, it is to this day. It covers and separates. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, uh, go, go back. Where did you leave off in Exodus 26? All right. Then go, let's, go, let's just go to, go to Genesis chapter 6. The hair on a woman's head serves as identification to the angelic host. So when, when women now, you know, and I, I think we talked this before, because the Bible said that this woman's hair, it serves as a glory and uh, power, it gave her power on her head, you know, uh, because of the angels. Uh, what that does is when that woman's head is covered, Amen. What it actually do is it shows that she is, in fact, submitted to a man so that an angelic being couldn't tamper with her as they did when they were here in Genesis chapter 6. All right, read that 6 and 1, huh? And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which are, were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I, was, I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. All right, so you know, see there that those angels came down and was tampering with those women. And so now uh, we give, uh, Paul gives a description of hair on a woman's hair, gives her power. And what happens is when a woman has hair and she's not tampering with her hair, it's you know, uh, uh, when angels see her, they understand that she is, in fact, submitted, amen, unto a man, so they won't bother with her. Amen. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Now, let's go down to the book of Isaiah 55. 
And let me see how much time I got. I got 15 minutes, so I probably can't go as deep as I want with this topic. But I'll tell you this. Pastors and preachers don't teach on this specific topic because they're afraid of losing members. Uh, amen. amen. And, you know, um, they get afraid of what people are going to say about them. And, but, you know, when it comes down to people and their salvation, now I'm not saying that everybody, you know, um, when uh, people or well, everybody is not going to uh, be subject to truth, but also everybody don't need to, you know, be open to this. When we first dealt with this, we first dealt with this, we talked about um, uh, uh, people being receptive to this, but we don't want to give that which is holy unto dogs. So these messages like this isn't for everybody. Messages dealing with holiness and how a person should dress, how they should talk, how they should live, you know, no makeup and all, all these different things like that. This conversation ain't for everybody. Yeah, amen. And then you see, you know, you can look around. Everybody not interested in holiness. Because <laughs> a lot of people don't want to hear it because they know they'll be accountable. Now, if I'm teaching on something else, this, this Sunday school will be full, packed. But when you start dealing with holiness, you'll see people that don't want to hear it because they know they'll be held accountable to it and for it. Now, and I'm not talking about people that ain't saved and people that are beginners and stuff. I'm talking about people that have been here. They don't want to hear this topic because I done said I'm, I'm going to be teaching on this for the next few months because it's a, it's a, it's a strenuous, it's a long topic to cover. Amen. Yes. Um, I was just thinking, thinking about the teaching that we've been getting on holiness. And yesterday, um, while I was home, had dropped something in my spirit about it like um even as a woman like when you get with a man and that man tell you i don't want you to cut your hair I, or he wants you to cut your hair mm -hmm. or he don't want you to wear this he wants don't you to wear it. that it's amazing how we know and half of them ain't no good they ain't saved or nothing but how we will change everything about ourselves to please a man that's right because you're in a relationship with him, you want to do everything he say to please him. That's right. But what about God? That's Why, right. Then you ready to lead a church yep. for your God that, that covered you while you was in that abusive relationship and the stuff that That's you right. went through and brought you to your right mind that you were able to see. And then you hear a little bit of thing that you got to give up for God and you ready to go, oh, I got to lead a church. Yep. You ain't no lead that sense. man nope. and you will still be with him if he still wanted to be with you. That's right. That's right. That's how it is. I've... I've I've noticed that um, and when you deal with relationship, you'll see that that's, that's very true. Very true. A woman, I've seen a woman. If, if, you, if, you, if you are around a person that you love and influenced by, your eating habits will change. Uh, uh, your dress code will change. If, you're, if, that, if that man say, I don't eat pork, or I don't eat this, you'll stop cooking it, and you'll stop eating it yourself. Because because of that relationship that you have with that man, it 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 it, 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 it changes, you. and that's why I've been teaching on relationship. I taught about last Sunday, your relationship with God requires a change, change with anybody and everything else. But you know, you'll get <clears throat> when it's time to even like a model, when you model or, or acting, they'll require you to grow hair on your face so you can fit the description of the. Of the person that ha require you to gain some weight, they require you to lose some weight, they require you to do all these different things because that's something that you want to do. And so the thing is, people just don't want to do what they need to for God. They do what they want, what they need to for a man, or you know, different relationships like that. But when it comes, every relationship, it, I don't care what, what relationship you in. If you're in a relationship with somebody and they act you or say, hey, maybe I like you wear your hair, you know, in braids. You, every time you get your hair done, it's going to be braided. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> they say, baby, I like that blue dress. You're going every, every dre to find every dress that looks like that blue dress because he like it. And when you get, uh, you get upset with him, then you're you going to start changing stuff up. 
But then when you try to get his attention again, you'll start going back to those things. Y'all follow what I'm saying? That, that, that got him. So that, that's, very, that's a powerful statement. People don't you know, realize how you know, uh, uh, influential relationships are. However, when it comes down to God, you should have the same exact feel. Say, oh, God, you don't want me to wear makeup? Then why change everything for you, God? You don't want me to cut my hair no more? Lord, you gave it to me. I ain't going to cut it no more. Amen. But, you know, the, the, the nature of people happens that way. All right. Now, I want you to go to the book of Numbers. The, a spirit of a person can be on a person by the way they dress, what they put on, the conversation. If you start talking like this person or you try, start dressing like this person, your mannerisms start to change into where you become this person. And so the same as it is within the spirit realm because people nowadays carry the spirit of Jezebel and you got some men that carry the spirit of Ahab. All right. It's going to be a tough one. All right. Go to Numbers 11 and 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. Ah, so the spirit of a person can be on people. So the Bible talks about Moses' spirit being upon the elders. Amen. And that. This is how you should see, you'll see that a lot of leadership, that, that, that spirit of that leader be on his sons. Amen. And the same as it was with, as it was with, with, with uh, uh, Moses. So you hear somebody say, oh, man, Pastor Nick sounds like apostle. Elder Johnson sounds like apostle. Pastor Porter sounds like apostle. We, we have certain, every, different parts of apostle, all, because that's our leader, we have that in us. That civil rights person, that's an apostle, that's in me too. It's the same, same exact man, I, I, I don't even care. It's the same way. Each of us, we have, we have the certain characteristics of our leader because his spirit is on us. And then I have sons that are here, and my spirit is on them. You hear Frankie teaching, you close your eyes, you'll think that I'm here. Amen. They have certain mannerisms of me. Uh, Avante, Laron, all, all of my sons have different, Davon, Tavon, they have different natures of me because they have my spirit. So a spirit of a man can be on other people. And people don't believe that until, you know, it, 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 you'll see. Now, read on to her. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them. When the spirit rested upon them. Now, they're not talking about God's spirit. They're talking about Moses' spirit. Mm. Moses' spirit was on them. Uh -huh. They prophesied and did not cease. So they start opera operating in a gifting Amen. That their leader had. All right. Matthew 17 and 10. All right. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. So, so they're trying to figure out, like, well, who is Elias? So Elias, of course, we know what Elias is, right? Elias refers to Elijah. That's just in, in, in the Greek text. So they said, e Elijah came already? How did he come? And then he describes a person that it came with the spirit of, e of Elijah. Read, uh-huh. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Oh, so John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. Mm. Amen. Y'all see that? All right. Go down there to go to 2 Kings chapter 1 and 8. And they answered him. He was an hairy man, girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. 
And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. All right, so the Bible talk, give a description of Elijah. Huh? Read. Then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill. And he spake unto him, thy man of God, the king hath said, come down. All right, so verse number 8 talks about him, a hairy and girt, a girdle of leather about his loins. And that was a description of Elijah. Now go down to the book of, um, go back to Matthew 3 and 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. And a leathern girdle about his loins. Now, the same way uh, John the Baptist was dressing was identical uh, uh, or congruent to the way that Elijah dressed. So he had that spirit on him, and you could tell by the way he what? Dressed. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right? Now, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 2. All right, two and nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Uh -huh. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews mm -hmm. and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. I'm sorry, 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. All right, listen to how that word is broken down. Uh, the church of what? Thyatira. All right, thy attire. Thy attire. Now you separate uh, that. Thy attire. What is attire? What you wear. Right? Now watch what they associate that with. Keep going, uh-huh. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel. Ah, now it's talking about who? Jezebel. So it talks about Jezebel, then it deals with attire. All right, read, uh-huh. Which calleth herself a prophetess. Called herself a prophetess. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. All right, so you'll see that when it talks about Jezebel, and I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it right here because this one's going to be a little longer and deep. So I, I, I don't want to have to stop and come back, but... When it deals with Jezebel, it deals with a person the way they look. So you could carry the spirit. We just saw that Elijah's uh, spirit was carried down on John the Baptist, the 70 elders. Their spirit was carried, uh, 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 Moses' spirit was carried by them because the spirit was placed on them by what they did. So you see that by a, a person, the way they dress, they can carry a specific spirit of somebody else. Amen. All right. Any, any questions? Any questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so when it, what about when um, women might dress real flashy or dress, um, I guess, like they might say they're not looking for attention, but the way they dress, you know, kind of is like attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. um, but they say, you know, this is just my style or whatever. Um, do you, oh my God, that's a question. Um, like, I guess could the spirit of Jezebel influence somebody to dress in a way that could like grab, you know, like in the attention grabbing ways, I guess? Well, I, I wouldn't say that because some people, you know, they just like to be ostentatious, if you will. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean they have a Jezebel spirit, but they may have a problem with self-confidence, so they have to dress themselves up to get attention. You know what I'm saying? Now, looking nice and just being over the top is different. You know what I'm saying? 
wearing like you know everything shiny, shoes shiny, you know everything, you know just you know you just like oh man, you know gotta cover my eyes when this person come because they you know grab so much. But some people just like to dress nice, and there's nothing wrong with people that like to dress nice. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. But when you when you talk about attire of, of Jezebel, you know, seductive and different things like that, because you can dress flashy and not seductive. A person can be real flashy and not seductive, but. You know, uh, and, and, and it, there's a difference between flashy and seductive. So, but you got an ostentatious look, you know, it's that real flashy, you know, look. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're operating on the spirit of Jezebel. All right. Any other questions? All right. All right. We're dismissed until um, prayer, 1145.